Yeah, so it has been a wild, wild week. I mean, you go back to the Fed decision. We had that monster short-squeezed rally after the Fed came out with that 50 basis point hike. We had Jerome Powell coming out with the press conference. He seemed to be not so, so super hawkish, but very hawkish, which was just a slightly better than the market anticipated. The market seemed to, to kind of breathe a sigh of relief. Uh, and then that all went out the window the next day. And I think the kicker for the next day was the productivity numbers. So the economic numbers came out with productivity numbers much, much weaker. And what we ended up seeing is that, you know, basically productivity slipping with high inflation is a recipe for stagflation. I think the market is really starting to get freaked out about that. So we've gone down heavily. We saw 5% on the NASDAQ yesterday, um, today, another down day. And again, it could stretch into next week. So I, I think that again, you know, we see rates continuing to go up. The 10 year is now, I think around 3.15, which is a remarkable move. And again, it's gonna slow the economy. There's no doubt about it. I think I think by the end of this year, early next year, we do have a recession on our hands. I, I think the Fed is okay with a slow and steady kind of down move in the, in the stock market. They don't like these big moves. Like 5% is huge. I mean, for people, it gives them shock. I mean, the average American looking at their 401k, it can give you a shock and, and then you say, hey, I'm not gonna spend anymore. And the, and the Fed wants you to slow your spend um, so that the the supply chain issue kind of corrects itself, but they don't want you to stop spending totally. And so I think this is where it is, is where they are okay with the stock market coming in. They know it was kind of overdone, but they just don't want it to fall off a cliff, which is starting to do because these the stock market and investors are starting to worry about a recession and stagnation. And the dollar being strong, it has been one heck of a run. And if I can hear, let me show my chart here so we can kind of gauge what the, the charts are showing us. So, I mean, it has been a, a meteoric run in the dollar. We've seen the dollar versus the yen just have this crazy move as well. The one thing I will say is that the dollar has hit resistance going back to this high, going back to 2017. So there is a chance that the dollar could be stalling here. Um, you want to see a pullback in the dollar again. You know, the biggest issue is, and this, by the way, shows how broken the system is. When you have the bond market making moves like it's doing, when the dollar is making moves like it's doing, when when the stock market is dropping 5% in a day like it's doing, it's telling you something is broken here. And this is where catastrophic events can come out. I mean, if you go back to 2008, the financial crisis where banks failed, things like this started to happen where these crazy moves occurred, and then it put th situations in play that should not ever have been in play. So, you know, we have to be very vigilant. You know, I'm sure the Fed is monitoring the situation very, very closely. But the dollar itself, major move. It is into resistance. It's stalled here. If we zoom in, you can see it's kind of has stalled there. But my concern is, is this making a bull flag? This kind of is consolidation that could break out. So that's going to be even more is an issue. Also, a strong dollar hurts companies like the earnings from companies like IBM as well. And that also can be hurtful to the stock market because if it brings in multiples because of that, that could be an issue. I mean, the biggest issue is do we start to get into liquidity? Does liquidity dry up? And we've seen that occur in the past where all of a sudden, you know, you don't have buyers of, of bonds or you don't have buyers of, of various different things. And then the bottom falls out and you can have a, a very big collapse in things, even like the stock market. You can have a flash crash type, type scenario on a big down day. You know, when we were down 5% on Thursday, it was one of those scenarios where if the algos had just stepped back because the selling got too intense. There was no buyers underneath and you could have seen a very, very big kind of crash scenario. So, you know, these type of markets are markets where you have to be very, very careful. I do think there are, are opportunities out there on, on levels, you know, like if you look at some of the tech stocks that are down 80% or more, you know, they could get bounces, but I wouldn't be marrying them at this point for the longer term because I still think the NASDAQ 100 has another probably 20% downside before it finds any sort of real level of stability. Now, if we can turn to how precious metals are reacting to all this, I mean, we have seen a downturn, which I guess is a bit surprising because it seems like precious metals should be thriving in this kind of stagflation environment. But your take? Yeah. So so I think I think what you're getting right now is is exactly what should happen in regards to at least the gold chart, the silver chart as well. And we'll go into that in just a minute. But basically what you had is you had this breakout on, on gold, right? You had this trend line here right here and then this secondary trend line and right here is where you broke out and when you broke out it happened to coincide with the invasion of ukraine a run for safety occurred where you saw gold shoot up right into what a technical trader would call a double top right so you went into resistance what do you get from resistance usually a pullback and that's what you're doing here so again for me i still think there could be a little bit more downside on gold to this 18 and a quarter ish level but ultimately this is a very normal check back to the breakout level. All right, so when charts break out, they tend to retrace to what we call the scene of the crime, which is right in this level. 
once that happens, you should see the next leg up in gold occur where it will take out this 2075 high and really start to, to catapult higher. And I still think it, it wouldn't shock me to see 2400 gold by year end. Um, you know, and again, that's December 31st would not shock me to see that. Now on silver, this is a little bit more of an interesting scenario. Silver had a breakout here, but it's come back below that level here and it's kind of settled into where it was trading. Now you might say, well, what's the difference here? Well, the difference is that as people start worrying about a recession again, uh, or a recession in the US economy, or maybe even the global economy, we have to remember that not only does silver act as a precious metal safety trade, but it's also an industrial metal. So that's the issue here is you've seen this pretty sharp sell off on silver, because people are now saying, wait a minute, maybe we don't maybe the world won't need as much silver supply, because there's a slowdown in buying due to a potential global recession.